All right, so I wanted to um, just talk a little bit about how plant cells and animal cells are different uh, when it comes to osmosis, because keep in mind that animal cells have a cell membrane, um, as do plant cells, but plant cells have a cell wall, so they can act a little bit differently, the cell itself. And I definitely want you to make sure that you have a sense of this before you do your experiment, and even include it into your introduction. So you will find this slide um, or this image on your third or fourth slide that you have on your notes. It's sort of on the bottom corner. And what you see is you see on the very top here um, red blood cells. And if you notice that this one here, and I'm going to use my fancy pen, this one is in the hypotonic solution. So that would be um, something as that we put this red blood cell into distilled water. Okay, so it's in a beaker of distilled, which is the same thing as just water. All right, a little bit different, but anyhow, again, for these here, we have inside the cell a hypertonic solution, which means you have low water. And you have outside of the cell high water concentration because it's hypertonic. So water moves from the high water concentration, let's try that again, high water, to low water, and it fills up that cell just like it did the egg so much that red blood cells burst. And we're going to actually see an image of that um, when we look at, uh, when you come into the classroom. So one of the warm-up questions is, what's happening to the cell? And you see these red blood cells just bursting. If they're in, it, here's a new term we have. We have isotonic. Isotonic, excuse me, not isotopic. Isotonic means that it is uh, in equilibrium. That means that the solute level and water level are equal on the outside to the inside. So uh, water concentrations are equal in and out of cell. And so for that reason, you're going to have a cell that pretty much is going to stay the same because one water molecule might be moving in while the other one is moving out. Okay, so it's going to be moving in and out, in and out, and the cell is not going to get larger and it's not going to get smaller. In this case here, we have a hypertonic solution. And just to remember, hypertonic solution, there we go means that you have here a beaker of maybe really salty water, okay? In which case, you have a high water concentration here and a low water concentration here because it's taking up, been taken up by so much salt. And so for that reason, you've got all the water leaving, all right? And you notice all those arrows. And so it shrivels up the cell. And, uh, and this is definitely something that can kill people, um, as well as hypotonic solutions. Um, but plant cells are a little bit different. Plant cells have that cell wall. And the cell wall is really rigid, as we know. So here we have a rigid cell wall. And the same thing happens to a plant cell, meaning when you put it into a hypertonic solution, you have low water here high water here, just as with the red blood cell. Water is moving in, but because it has that cell wall, it can't burst. It's actually kind of just swells up. So when you see a beautiful plant that looks nice and healthy, and it's standing nice and straight, it actually, you're giving it water so that it can swell up like this. So this is what we call a term of turgid. Okay, we use that term turgid because it means that it's sort of swollen up. 
and um, and it looks healthy. It's what we expect. Same thing for isotonic solution. This is where you have the same amount of water coming in as out. And the reason is, is the water concentrations, as I say here, are equal. So it's not a high concentration and a low concentration. They're equal. All right. So in that case, you have then a cell that pretty much is kind of flaccid, to be honest. And this is what looks like a wilted plant. It's not dead. So if you give it water, it'll give it have those turgid cells. It's just kind of limp, okay? Um, because it hasn't expanded as much. And then when you have this sort of situation, where you have all the water leaving out because you have here a high water concentration and it's been put in that salty water and here you have a low water concentration. You have something where the cell membrane actually tears off. Cell membrane tears off of cell wall. And this is called plasmolysis, okay? And plasmolysis is actually where you're pretty much killing the plant cell. It tears that off and it's no longer able to come back um, to what it was. So that's looking at osmosis at different um, plant cells and animal cells. Please include, at least for the plant cell, when you are um, talking about your introduction of how plants cells, which is either the potato, the carrot, or the celery, how they are affected by osmosis. Have a good weekend.